Starting this week, this is what the game looked like on an Android phone. It actually just didn't work. And after a week's worth of fixing stupid bugs and annoying build scripts, this is how it runs now. There are still some problems with it and some devices definitely run it better than others, but progress is being made. This is a game about exploration and discovery in a high fantasy world. You discover things, collect items, kill monsters. I'm developing it all on my own game engine, which means that making it work on things like an Android phone um, can be a bit complicated. And as the old saying goes, we do these things not because they're easy, but because we thought they were going to be easy. So last week, the big problem that everything else was hanging off on was the file system issue. Loading resources on Android behaves differently from basically any other platform I have to support and my engine was not architected around that fact. If you don't give it the correct paths and the correct functions, it will just get stuck and just totally freak out. Now I thought this was going to be a massive job to fix, but actually, I had a great idea. I would write my own wrapper class to manage the file system paths, which call through to the correct API depending on the platform you're actually on. So functions that I use all the time, like the exist function, could have both implementations in place and just swap between them depending on the platform. I could then just replace all uses of std file system path in my code base and all would be right with the world. After trying that solution, I kind of just thought it might not be as complicated as it seems, so I just kind of did it anyway. Once I'd slotted that file path change in, things gradually just started to come to life. All right, people, we've had some major success. I don't really know what to think of this because I almost didn't expect it to work. Look at that. What? That? is my GUI example running on Android. I never thought this day would come. Like it's actually doing stuff. If you, you can interact with it, you can move the slider, you can press stuff. This is incredible. It has taken some time. I mean, AI can do a bit of it, but it's mostly me having to clean up chatty's nonsense. I also had to implement things like JSON and XML parsing in like a much more generic way, but also that made the code base a lot cleaner. So. Who actually cares? This GUI demo was the first piece to actually start working, but you can still see it had issues doing things like loading images and different font faces. I literally spent the entire week diagnosing lots of small problems like this, gradually making the code base work. But I was able to render stuff after a while and it was great to see that it wasn't just completely broken. Now the game itself is a lot more complicated because it also has this native plugin that isn't actually written in Squirrel. This just kind of complicated everything and ultimately took me an extra day but I've now got a nice script with all of the CMake flags to do it. Finally, I was able to get the game running on Friday and it looked truly stunning, mostly. <laughs> Obviously the GUI is wrong compared to iOS, but also this GUI is a steaming fat stack anyway, which is soon to be annihilated, so let's just forget about it. The biggest problem I have is that the frame rate is um, not very good. And this is after running all of those improvements I made the other week. Now, the good news is I do think this can be resolved. I do think this is because this is a debug build and just has a lot of slowness baked in. The libraries are all massive and I'm fairly sure when I tested the engine on Android last time something very similar happened. I was absolutely sprinting on Saturday to try and get a release build to prove this hypothesis, but I ran out of time. So there's always next week. Come back next week. You won't regret it. I'm also noticing some differences between the Google Pixel and the Samsung as far as graphical glitches goes. There's artifacting absolutely everywhere on the Pixel and annoyingly, there's no doubt in my mind that this relates to my face merging algorithm because the topology is now quite weird. So that's something else to look into. However, the fact that there's a difference between the two goes to show that it was a good idea to buy two separate phones with two different types of GPU architectures. So well planned out me for probably the first time ever. <laughs> and I've also started to get some of this building in the cloud. All dependencies are building fine and I've slowly refined my scripts to the point where the Android build repo can just be cloned and pointed to these cloud dependencies to build an engine without issue. So it does look like we're gonna get Android support in the engine actually finished. Next week, I wanna get proper automated builds for Android for the game, um, merge the Android branch into the master branch of the engine and basically just draw a line under this whole thing.